Warning, you're entering total bias territory. If you're looking for an objective look at Windows, or if you're thinking that any review doesn't inherently represent the bias of the person making it, you probably should leave now. Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today I'm going to take a look at Windows 11 from the point of view of somebody who has not used Windows in any meaningful way for the past four years. So sure, I've used it periodically and dabbled with the Windows Insider beta, but that lasted a grand total of 15 minutes, so you can expect a fresh set of eyes and a complete lack of objectivity. Just like I can't be objective about how good this segue to today's sponsor is. So this video is sponsored by QMU Care. Basically, every sysadmin knows how to manually update QMU, but this generally involves shutting down your VMs, updating QMU, restarting everything, or migrating your VMs to another server while you're updating QMU. It's, it's a long and bothersome process. QMU Care lets you live patch these virtual machines, so you can make sure that they're as secure as possible without them going down. It lets you avoid doing complex migrations with your QMU or KVM machines while you're doing maintenance, as QMU itself will be live patched as your virtual machines are still running. You don't even need any specific maintenance window, because patching happens in the background, transparently, while your VM still operates normally. So if you want to see how that all works and get your free trial, click the link in the description below. So let's begin with installing Windows, because if we're going to judge Linux on how hard or easy it is to install, we're also going to judge Windows by the same standards. Installing Windows is still a very simple process if you just want to reformat your drive. While a lot of the install process still looks like what it did in the Vista days, it's relatively straightforward, I must say. It doesn't look amazing, it definitely doesn't really handle as many things as most Linux installers, but it works. Although it lets you only reinstall just the system without needing a separate partition for your user files, that's something we could take inspiration from. It's also very reflective of Microsoft's mentality. Only Windows exists, so we're not offering to set up a dual boot with anything pre-existing. Have fun with our partition tool if you want to do that, and we will still completely erase any bootloader that you might have. I mean, when you're certain that no one uses anything else than what you make, why bother, right? The configuration screens that come next are really much better than what we usually get in Linux installers though, apart from the horrendous Cortana voice blaring at you even if you didn't ask for it. Okay, it's probably a good thing for accessibility reasons. These screens are clean, super simple and enticing and very reassuring. Compare this to what Ubuntu gives you during install, or the Calamares installer on Manjaro, and you get the feeling we could learn a thing or two. The Pop! OS elementary installer or the GNOME post-install setup utility are generally on the same level as what Windows offers though, with simple steps and generally much, much faster performance and setup steps. Now these constant loading times and reboots and restarts and please wait are super jarring and they really make you feel like Microsoft doesn't know what it's doing, it's just setting up a user account. Unfortunately, unless you remove internet access to your device, there is no setting up a computer without a Microsoft account, which is very annoying. Then you get to the screen where you will decide how much you want to restrict Microsoft data collection, knowing full well that you can't completely stop it. Location, find my device, diagnostic data, inking, tailored experiences, advertising ID, all of these are collecting data, and you can't really disable all of them entirely, as you will still transmit at least required diagnostic data. In the end though, privacy excluded, this installation process and setup process isn't bad. It's too long, it's too stuttery, it restarts way too often, but it works and it's easy to understand. Now let's talk about the desktop and its look and feel. And now I gotta say, out of the box, Windows 11 is shiny. I wasn't completely opposed to how Windows 10 looked either, but this is smooth. The rounded corners, pop-up animations, subtle gradients and little movements of the icons when you click on them, it's all pretty nice to look at and to use. It kind of reminds me of using GNOME or macOS, where every interaction has a little animation to help you understand what you did. I like it. I also like the customization options with the dark mode and the accent colors, but these aren't picked up everywhere in the system. Some right-click menus don't use them, the file manager doesn't use it either, that's where it all starts to crumble, basically. I mean, if people tolerate this on Windows right now, they will probably also be very much okay with it on Linux once libadvita drops, right? Like, I'm in dark mode here. Why do my file or folder properties appear blindingly white? 
They're not a third-party app, they're provided by Microsoft, and they're part of the file manager which uses the dark mode. And they don't adapt. The control panel doesn't either. Basically, every time I get out of one of Microsoft's revamped default apps and go to something from the Windows 95 or XP era, I get this horrendous disconnect. It is incredible to me that this isn't fixed yet. They've had the whole life cycle of Windows 10 to fix it and replace these panels and interfaces with modern components. At least, at the very least, implement dark mode on these interfaces if you don't want to remake them. The desktop itself is pretty simple though. The new menu is nice if you don't like using your mouse to navigate, because objectively the list of apps is way worse than Windows 10's menu if you're a mouse user. Search is much better and quicker to find something anyways than to try and navigate nested menus, so it was time to move to this way of using a menu and it's well done. Of course you'll still get these terrible ads. I can't believe this hasn't been removed either. Why am I getting third-party app shortcuts in my menu? Trixie Microsofters! Why does clicking these icons download them instead of opening them? Either you put them in there or you don't, but don't make me think the app is installed if it isn't. The new notification area is pretty cool. I like it. But these system tray icons really need some kind of update to follow the new style. They're not line-based, they're not monochrome, they're not using the same right-click menu style than other icons. It's bad. And that's also something that permeates Windows 11, it seems. Right-click menus aren't always the same. In some places, they're that new, nice look with big items, translucent background. And sometimes you get these old-style, ugly menus that don't even pretend to be part of the same system. The whole new widget pane is apparently also limited to people who have a Microsoft account, because how else would you collect enough data to create a profile on someone, right? It's kinda messy. It's all Bing powered and it's going to need a lot of training to get it to show me articles that could actually interest me. The available widgets aren't super useful to me either, since they all require that you sync various activities with your Microsoft account, like to-do lists or calendars. But if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, that's actually pretty good. Now why would you give me football results front and center, Microsoft? That's insulting, it's a terrible sport. I kinda like the fact that you get touchpad gestures on the laptop though. Although these aren't one-to-one -one and just trigger in the middle of a swipe, so they are not as good as what we get on GNOME or Elementary OS on Linux. I also kinda like the Teams integrations out of the box. Not specifically because I like Microsoft Teams, I have never used it in my life, but because I think it's good to have a solution to let people talk with each other out of the box. I think Linux distros could take a page out of that book and have something like Friends to let people immediately add their messaging accounts and start talking to people. It's what most people do on these devices. In general, I don't think the default experience on Windows 11 is bad. It looks good, it's smooth and well animated. The default apps do their job well, unless you're a privacy nerd like me, and using the system is pretty simple. Simpler than on Windows 10, I'd say. It's got basically no customization for the interface with no way to change how the taskbar works, apart from sticking everything to the left instead of the middle, but the addition of dark mode and accent colors is good. The only real issue is that once you dive any further than one or two levels of an app and open a side panel, a settings panel, a properties panel, you realize it's just another coat of paint on top of Windows XP. The dirty, ugly, untouched core is still the same, just redecorated. So let's talk about the App Store experience. This new Microsoft Store has progressed very nicely compared to what I remember from Windows 10. First, it looks a lot better as an application. It's still a mix of apps, games, movies, and TV shows, so that's not fantastic. I much prefer split approaches, but it's not a confusing app. It does lack clear categories to navigate though, and it's still a nightmare to find anything useful in it. Because as of now, there just really isn't much in terms of apps, and it's a far cry from the Linux graphical stores that contain virtually everything you would want to install. Now it's just too bad that Microsoft and Apple can both nail the look and feel of their App Store apps, but have lackluster offerings inside of them, and we get the whole breadth of applications installable on Linux, but we can't have a good looking store for the life of us. Now here, you basically get 10% of what you'd want, and the rest is either shady, paid for redistributions of open source applications without any respect for branding or trademarks, for example LibreOffice, or it's just not available at all. GIMP, OnlyOffice, LibreOffice, Steam, the Adobe Creative Cloud, they're not in there. I was still surprised to find VLC, Discord, OBS Studio, the Epic Game Store, or even iTunes. It's progress. 
And I have no doubt that Microsoft will end up getting most important apps in there, but for now, it's not enough. And you still have to go hunt for .exe files and install them manually like a caveman, without any centralized way to manage updates to these apps. It's still the old, painful install method, prone to viruses, hacked redistributed versions of apps, or apps that install adware and toolbars if you're not careful. It's truly dreadful that this still hasn't been solved on Windows. No, no, no you don't. You don't get to tell me to use Chocolatey or Winget because a regular Windows user doesn't know that it exists and will never use a command line package manager to install apps, ever. Now, of course, I can't mention Windows 11 without talking about all the other crappy stuff. The performance decrease on AMD CPUs that has just recently been fixed? That's shitty and shows a true lack of regression testing. The limitations on which hardware is compatible to the point that installing Windows 11 in a VM requires using regedit? Truly crappy move. The fact that you can't use your computer fully without a Microsoft account? Can't say that I like it either. The fact that you can't easily make a web browser the default if you miss the pop-up the first time, atrocious and anti-consumer. It's all a very, very bad look for Microsoft and it goes against everything an operating system should do. The operating system should facilitate your use of the computer, not make you fight it to do whatever you want. It's the antithesis of Linux and it's something that Balmer run Microsoft from that Balmer era would really enjoy having, but it's something that I thought that the new Nadella-controlled Microsoft had gone over, but apparently no, they're, they're still just as bad as they were in terms of anti-competitiveness and anti-user practices. So, as a Linux fanboy, what do I think of Windows 11? On the surface, it's wonderful. Smooth, shiny, redesigned, more accessible, it's good. But when you scratch that thing though, you notice the cracks underneath the new coat of paint. It's still the same insecure kernel and system, the same decades-old panels and Win32 interfaces that power the innards of the OS. The store is still decidedly empty compared to what we get on Linux. And while the installer is on par with what we get on Linux, it also will destroy any other bootloader you have installed previously, completely disregarding user preference. And there's the data collection, the monopoly abuse particularly visible with Microsoft Edge, the new random requirements that you can bypass at the price of security updates, the performance regressions, Windows is now beautiful and user-friendly on the surface, but at its heart and core, it's still the same dark black mess of anti-competitiveness. And personally, apart from the occasional envy of having a well-integrated ecosystem where you use one account to access everything, I just can't see anything on Windows that makes me feel that Linux is inferior at all. It looks good in screenshots, but there is no way I could use it without losing my mind at all the bad practices and incoherence of it all. Now, as a desktop operating system, without taking into account the third-party application support or the fact that it's pre-installed on most computers, just take it as an operating system in itself. It is truly an inferior product to most Linux distributions. It can still teach us a thing or two on how to make a really nice animated and shiny interface, a good-looking store and a more user-friendly installer. But it's still the same dirty, disgusting windows underneath and it's just not something I can see myself using ever. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. I know you guys already know about Slimbook, but basically what I can tell you about them is that I only use their stuff nowadays. My desktop is the Slimbook Chimera, my laptop is the Slimbook Pro X 14 inch, and my keyboard is the Slimbook RGB keyboard. They make Linux laptops and desktops for every price point. If you need a new Linux device, check out the link in the description below. I can only recommend them. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can still dislike while YouTube still shows the counter, I don't know if they already have made that change by the time this video releases. If you don't like YouTube because of that dislike change, you can also go to Odyssey where all my videos live and you can also join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members to help me keep making this a full-time job. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!